Welcome to our 29th edition of FSI Fridays. I'm Edwin in Boston, joined by... Johansson, live in Charlotte. Hey, Johansson, what do we have lined up today? Thanks, Edwin. Today we're going to talk about the data engineering challenges and complexities of AI and the benefit of using transformative technologies like cognitive services and how AI is being leveraged to address issues faced by all financial services institutions. Then we'll talk about how New Desert created a specific solution around document intelligence that enables customers to quickly and easily apply AI to business scenarios to maximize value. And last but not least, we're going to see a really cool demo that automatically extracts and transforms unstructured data and how and why our financial services customers are leveraging this to maximize business value. Then we'll wrap it up with Q&A today on FSI Fridays. For those of you watching live or on YouTube, as a quick reminder, we'll spend around 30 minutes on today's topic and leave the last 10 minutes to address any burning questions. So please use the Q&A window and monitor for questions during the presentation. If you're watching the recording, feel free to use the comments below to ask your questions. And let's get started and meet the presenters for today. Johansson, who's our special guests this week? We're thrilled to be joined by three guests this week. Let's start with you, Daniel, a senior account strategist inside of Microsoft. Daniel, thanks for being on the show today. Can you let our audience know what your role is at Microsoft and what your typical day is like? We also hear something positive that came out of the pandemic is that you made a big move somewhere. Hi, Johansson. Yes, I made a big move. Uh, just last week, moved from the freezing temperatures of Chicago, Illinois, to uh, sunny Santa Monica, California. So I, I have a picture in the background. It's actually a stock image of a beach. I actually haven't seen the beach yet. So I live about a mile away, but maybe this weekend. Um, so to your other question around uh, my role, what I do. So I, I'm currently a senior account technology strategist with Microsoft, and I'm supporting our capital markets business. But for the last five years, I've been working as a specialist in our data and AI business, helping our regulated industry customers uh, evaluate AI and solution new uh, business processes with AI as the underpinnings to those solutions. So I've had a lot of exposure in seeing how our, our business partners and customers are transforming with artificial intelligence. That's great, Daniel. Uh, now I'm a bit jealous because it's snowing right outside my window here in Boston. So uh, maybe I should consider making that move. Um, but let's get right to it. Uh, Daniel, I'm sure the audience is pretty familiar with AI at a high level. Can you provide us with some context to help us really get grounded on today's subject? So there's two levels of intelligence. And when we think about AI, we think about AI is human intelligence. Right? So the two levels of intelligence are perceptive intelligence, uh, this is the ability to see, to hear, to smell. And then the high level is cognitive intelligence. That's the ability to reason, to learn, to acquire knowledge. Perceptual intelligence is the key ingredient to cognitive intelligence, right? So we have uh, reasoning to learn and form conclusions with that imperfect data that's captured through vision, speech, language. Uh, understanding to interpret meaning of data, including text, voice, images, and then giving people natural ways to interact with uh, these outcomes or this data. So that, that's kind of the foundation of AI. So when you think about artificial intelligence, it's really broken up into two buckets, narrow AI and general AI. And if you could toggle uh, the animation one time, Edwin, it kind of brings up the timing, right? So narrow AI, that's that's now. That's a machine's ability to perform a single task extremely well, extremely well even better than humans. General AI, <laughs> when you think about robots taking over the future, that's general AI. Uh, if you could toggle the animation, I, I say X plus years, might be three years, might be five, might be 10. That's in development today with some very specialized hardware. Uh, but for today's conversation, we're specifically talking about these use cases uh, for narrow AI. Um, I wanna show an example of how AI comes to life and performs a specific task extremely well. So here, this is uh, Ms. Pac-Man, which we're all familiar, I'm sure we're all familiar with. Um, using reinforcement learning, Microsoft Research has developed an algorithm to uh, in, allow Ms. Pacman to achieve a perfect score. And you could actually see here the neural networks guiding her decisions based on you know, hundreds and thousands of iterations of, of Ms. Pacman running through this game, able to achieve a perfect score. Now, none of our customers want to score perfect on Ms. Pacman or any other video game uh, to my knowledge, but they want to have the ability to perform specific tasks very, very well. Um, so well that in, in some instances, machines can do it more effective and more automated than humans are able to. 
That, that's really cool, Daniel. Um, why is now the right timing for this discussion as it relates to our financial services customers? And maybe even why is AI so relevant now? And is the technology mature enough for our customers to be able to leverage them today? Joe Hansen, great questions. Uh, yes, over the last six years since I've been at Microsoft, we've had a number of breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, and we have some uh, very intelligent colleagues in Microsoft Research, but for over the last 30 years have been turning these ideas into reality, right? So there's eight Microsoft Research Labs across the globe, over 1,000 researchers across 20 fields, over 4,000 patents, and, and you know tens of thousands of papers. But if you toggle next, the reason that the timing now is, is so relevant and critical is because there's been breakthroughs in those perceptual intelligence uh, uh, features, right? So speech recognition, machines translation, conversational Q&A, object detection. Microsoft Technologies has met or exceeded human parity in each of those five in each of those buckets. So going forward, that foundation of the technology has the same competency or at least same foundation as what humans are capable of. And that's why AI today is, is such a relevant conversation and something our customers are really uh, investing in. Hey, Daniel, you know, you mentioned that you were at Microsoft for six years. Um, can you give us an example or talk about common use cases with regulated industries, especially in financial services? And what do you consider an untapped opportunity you've seen where FSI customers perhaps don't realize this low hanging fruit exists? That's a great question. Um, and, and, you know, one thing I didn't call out was talked about all the great ideas that came out of Microsoft Research. And then how you bring it to life is they actually took these great ideas, these innovations, they pre-package them into cognitive services, which are uh, how customers are gonna access through APIs and they're able to call these 30 years of research as simple as uh, calling an API and infusing into the application. So uh, Edwin, to, to your question you just asked around relevant use cases, the one use case I've seen at every regulated industry customer that I've worked with is around document intelligence, right? So organizations have all these flat files they may be PDFs from legacy contracts. They may be new contracts that are written that are in a PDF or a Word doc or another flat file type. They may have JPEGs or PowerPoints scattered across the universe of documents. They want the ability to be able to uh, mine all of those documents and, and apply knowledge mining so that they can get insights out of it. So organizations, insurance, uh, banking, capital markets, they all have the same use case. We have terabytes of data and we can't get any value out of it. And today we have to have humans go and search through all of this data to extract these insights, like what's the date that a contract expires? What is the specific clause that was written to a contract? This kind of brings the concept to life, right? Of what knowledge mining is or uh, document intelligence. So we have these files. We want to take all of those flat files and ingest them uh, into the cloud. And then uh, per document, extract the relevant language, any potential uh, face or imagery that exists, organization and entities, locations, key phrases. They want the ability to extract all of those so at, another, at a later date, they're gonna be able to search against it. Right? You have all this data landed in the repository and when you apply something like Azure Search on top of it, you can have a really slick UI where now quickly organizations can start to get value out of the data. I think you see where organizations are going, right? They extract the data, they extract these entities, they put it in some type of data store or in JSON format, and then they have the ability to apply that that uh, Azure search or um, a search capability on top of all those documents. We're also now storing this data all in a central repository, and then you're now processing it. What type of other value can customers actually get out of all this data? Sure, so look at wave one as storing that data. Right, and being able to search against it blindly. But organizations, that's just wave one. They have many ideas on what they'd want to do if they did have that uh, uh, capability um, to, to knowledge mine against the documents. And some of the things that we've seen customers do, they take those insights and they start to infuse them into their legacy applications, or they modernize their application and it, it, they're now able to introduce AI into it. Some organizations are able to store it into a row and column format and start to do predictions with which what was once a flat file on structured data now is this valuable resource that they can apply AI on top to uh, AI and machine learning on top to so you start to understand what trends are going to happen in the future and then lastly in, in a very common place organizations start is using something like power bi on the front end to start to visualize some of the insights that they got from doing that knowledge mining daniel this is really cool stuff um so how do customers get started with this technology 
So there's three different paths. Uh, the first, we see customers absolutely do some internal research and de development. They kind of develop on their own. They ask Microsoft for guidance. And then that brings us to the next wave, right? Typically, Microsoft will engage and help with architecture design and understanding uh, what technologies might be really relevant for their use case. And organizations will work with Microsoft, but once this starts to mature, once they want to start to bring it to life or into a pilot, it can be really challenging, especially for your first AI workloads in, in training uh, these models and developing these end-to-end -end data engineering solutions. You know, cloud computing is incredible, but there's a huge barrier um, for any net new workload, especially ones that are at the cutting edge of technology. So where we see our partners, Udesic, come in is they've been working in this space for a number of years. They won our data and AI partner uh, of the year in the last five years at Microsoft. And what I've seen is they really have the ability to accelerate time to value for our customers in AI, but specifically in solutions regarding document intelligence and knowledge mining. Thanks for the segue, Daniel. And I see so much value with how our customers can actually use knowledge mining to extract that document intelligence. And I'm honored to have our first ever guests um, that are partners joining us on FSI Fridays. Steve and Ken, thanks for joining us. Steve, let's start with you. Can you tell us about your role at Nudesic and what your typical day is like? I also hear you've taken continuing education to the next level. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me actually start there. So I actually started my career about 20 years ago, right around when the market crashed. So I was trying to differentiate myself from other young, bright-eyed college grads, and I decided I was going to get certifications. And it's actually something I've, I've kept up with over the years at a pace of about give or take to a year. And right now I'm at about 44 certifications. So yeah, I definitely uh, am a continual learner. I think that's a fair statement. Um, as far as, as as my role at Nudesic, I'm the Senior Director of Solutions for the East Region. So from a technology point of view, I'm responsible for all up tech across data and AI, cloud enablement, application innovation, as well as the modern work workplace stack. I've got a team of about uh, eight to 10 directors and architects that roll up to me, as well as about 75 consultants on the uh, East East Coast. That being said, my background has been primarily up until about the last three years spent in the data and AI space. I, in fact, worked for Microsoft twice, too. That's amazing, Steve. Uh, one, I must say congrats on those 44 certification exams. You have more certifications than I am uh, in years uh, old. So uh, that's great stuff. Um, so we're also joined by Ken Kuzdes. Uh, Ken, what's your day, to day at Nudesic? And we hear you may have played uh, for John Williams in an orchestra. What's that all about? Hey, guys. Glad to be here. Um, haven't been able to play with John Williams just yet, but I am a cellist, and I have had the honor to play in places like Carnegie Hall or the Steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, music has been uh, positively impacting my life ever since I decided to, to start. Uh, but at Nudesic, I'm not a cellist professionally for them, unfortunately. But I do ultimately help drive technology to be more consumable for our clients. My role specifically is to help come up with innovative solutions, oftentimes leveraging AI like we're discussing today, to be able to impact their workloads in a positive manner, help them be more cost effective, help them be more efficient, ultimately driving the value that they wish to accomplish. Thanks, Ken. So let's kind of move into the topic of document intelligence and what Nudesic can actually bring to the table here. Could you just first lay some foundations for our audience in terms of what makes documents so complicated and fundamentally so challenging for AI detection? There are a wide range of forms, um, documents, reports that our financial services customers use. Why is it so challenging? You know, ever since we were small children, we've been reading documents. And so we just automatically assume it must be easy to read a document. But as you can see in this visual here, on the, documents are broken up into many different segments. We have images, we have text, and that text placement has different meanings. There's different formats, such as lists versus paragraphs. All of that requires different forms of artificial intelligence. AI is essentially pattern recognition, and it looks for a very specific pattern. So we ultimately take these documents, break them into those segments, and apply Microsoft's AI to the most appropriate segments of that document, which allows it to perform in its most optimal manner. And then we bring that all together to have the full context of what it all is needed for your business. 
Ken, that's great uh, background there. So many times our customers are thinking about AI as a point solution uh, that they bring it to solve this document intelligence problem as if it's a silver bullet, but it turns out it's much larger than that. Can you talk us through why that's not the case and also talk to us how Nudesic is solving for this challenge? You are absolutely correct. Many customers focus first on the artificial intelligence element and understandably so. It is the backbone of what is going to enable them to get that data out of a, uh, a document or an image and other unstructured data. However, when you look at the full business problem, AI, while critical, is only one of several components. You need to have a foundational platform that allows you to take advantage of that AI while also considering things like, what is the business workflow we're actually needing to accomplish? Where's the data coming from? Where's it going? Um, how do I validate that the data has been extracted successfully? Um, what kinds of security do I need to have wrapped around this data? Um, do I need to integrate to lines of systems or do I need to have any special training for our business users to be able to accomplish this? All of these are factors and we've brought that all together into the accelerator that we call Nudesic's Document Intelligence Platform. This allows us to take advantage of Microsoft Azure holistically, leveraging all the different components that Microsoft has brought to bear and simplifying the consumption of that artificial intelligence while also considering all the business problem in its full context. So, you know, before we jump into the solution, I had a quick question, uh, Ken. So security is always top of mind for our FSI customers. Can you talk to us about how this solution is aligned to the necessary security models uh, that they require? Absolutely. Security is absolutely critical, especially in an industry like FSI or the industries that make up FSI. One of the unique factors of Microsoft's approach and why we've partnered with you in creating this platform is the options that are available to us within the security realm. We often start with something like public cloud, and that can be tied in to your infrastructure for security. We can use virtual networking and private endpoints that allow us to secure all of the data that's flowing through this platform behind your firewall, which enables heavy in industry compliance to be possible. It also allows us to do things like containerization. We can actually containerize these cloud services and run them wherever you need them to run, whether that's on premises, on the edge in the field, opening up even more potential opportunities. So while security is absolutely critical, we can play the game that is needed for your industry compliance might take place in public cloud, private cloud, or even containerized in the field. That's really great to hear that security is, is top of mind in terms of how the solution uh, can be architected. Now, I heard we, we're talking about that solution. So let's bring this all to life for our audience. Our audience loves demos and would love to see how this can all be possible. Maybe specifically talking about how we can show that, how we can simplify that training of artificial intelligence for our business use cases specifically, because training artificial intelligence seems like a daunting task. And I hear the solution makes it easy. So let me share my screen here and I can start to walk you through what our model training experience is. And you're absolutely right. When we first started building out these types of solutions, you know, 24, 36 months ago, it was taking us, you know, um, engineer weeks. So we would have engineers working on each one of these models for weeks, trying to find the right blend of cognitive services and all of that in, in order to find a composite model or a composite solution to solve the actual business challenge. And by going through that pain, what we wanted to do was we wanted to come up with a business accessible approach to actually training and interacting with AI so that we could really take the good work that Microsoft Research has done and start to democratize it even further. So let's take a good example here of you know a financial document and we can open that up. Hey Steve, this looks like a document that our you know many of our FSI customers have. How do we extract the elements here and find specific value out of this document? That's an excellent question. So now that we understand the type of document that we want, we're going to know exactly what we need to get out of it. So my use case here is I need to get the portfolio information out of this table here. So rather than having to tag each individual properly, property separately, what I can do is I can create what we have here um, as a portfolio tag, right? So I call it portfolio. I change it from text to table. Now, if, if this is something that could repeat throughout a document, it could be multi-instance, it could be mandatory for validation. We actually have what we call webhooks, which is a way to integrate other validation or business rules types of procedures at the individual document level. And once we're done here, we save it. 
And once we have identified it, now obviously we want to start to train. So we've got a table that has been identified here. This is the portfolio table. I'm going to tag this. This is going to bring up kind of our next level UI. So what you're going to see here is you're going to see kind of the values that have been extracted from the uh, table cells. You're going to see the schema on the left hand side. So it has default values. We can name them whatever. We can also import column headers from over here and then we can actually match the underlying column header to the actual value. Why this is important, we have a lot of FSI customers with documents that have a flexible format, meaning it always has these five columns, but it sometimes has a sixth column or a seventh column. So training doesn't really work against that, right? So we need to actually make sure that we can map the right field to the right actual metadata. So now we have this trained, so it's going to pick up and you can see the actual columns, it's going to be picking up there. Steve, that was really impressive. I love how this is all in the power of a business decision maker or a business user. It doesn't involve IT in terms of coming in here and actually you know, classifying or tagging this, this content. So now that this content is all tagged, does this business user need to go to IT to go get them to build this model so that they can use this on a repeatable fashion? That is an excellent question. One of the things that we were trying to do is we were really trying to, you know, make sure that we have the right checks and balances in place, but we also wanted to make sure that we were enabling our customers and we were enabling their experience. And in order to do that, we had to take into account kind of the, the entire life cycle of this model. So once we upload and train data, which we've done now, then we need to actually train the model, right? So now we can go in and we can click on train that will build this model but we always have two versions of the same model right so we have the trained version and we have the published version because with ai we want to make sure that we test it so once we train it we then have the ability to test the model when we're happy with the results that we're seeing flow through through the system we can then publish it that's great, Steve. You know, when, when we think of AI, we strive to make sure, you know, maybe it's learning and getting better over time. How does someone come in and validate and help improve the model on an ongoing basis? I'm sure a lot of these folks using this tool want to make sure that they're getting the data they need and that it's learning and improving over time. That's an excellent question. Why don't I show you that? So this is our kind of, you know, default dashboard experience here. You can see the published documents and the testing documents, right? So you can see the things that are flowing through the system. Um, you can see the ones that we're actually testing against. I was looking for, let's pull up a W2 here. So let's just grab one of these and you can see what it actually looks like here. So here is a W2 that has been processed to extract the income, the year, the employer, and the customer. So we can see what's actually going. You can see that the customer has been flagged. Now, if for some reason this was incorrect, right? One of the one of the important concepts of AI is this continuous learning, right? You have to teach it. It's pattern recognition. You have to help it get better. Um, we can actually improve this training, right? So we can click here and we can provide feedback to the underlying AI models. And if I click on improve, it will actually add that to the training set and make sure that it provides the feedback in so it can get re retrained appropriately. So we've got that kind of optimization, validation, feed, feed, feedback in the loop. But the entire point of this is not to have a human in the loop at the end state. So we have the ability to layer in web, web hooks, which are really just kind of pieces of logic that we can use for validation or, um, you know, just enriching some of the documents. So with that validation logic, what we want to do is we want to auto validate as many of these documents as possible. So we are only the exceptions are being validated and that's, or sorry, are only being manually validated. I really love how your solution here automatically tags the content, even associates it to a color. But when you think about our financial services customers and the scenarios in which they would leverage this, it's part of a traditional workflow whether it be bringing documents in or being able to extract that information. How do customers take full advantage of your solution here as part of their workflow process? So bringing that data in, extracting it, using it for other scenarios that can really maybe transform their business process. That's an excellent question, right? So what you need to keep in mind while we're showing you this solution 
a document at a time. This solution was designed for scale. We have customers running millions of documents through this system a year, and they are using it to take documents as they as they come in, classify them, extract elements, route them, you know, um, make decisions based off of them, do 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 things for their customers. So it's important to know that while we're looking at this like one document at a time, it's really the whole point is at scale. So we have triggers and destinations. Triggers are how we get content in and we have the ability to out of the box take content from, you know, we can crawl file shares to push content. We can look at SharePoint. Um, we can, there, there's lots of different mechanisms. We can have it, you know, monitor an email box. We, there's, there's so many different ways we can actually get it in. And then once we actually extract the value out, we will we will be delivering it out to a destination to a downstream system could be azure search right support that knowledge mining situation could be a decision support system or an rpa tool something that's routing documents or taking actions or an approval process right so this is definitely one piece and as ken was also showing right we want to make make sure that it's able to integrate into that into that larger workflow that's a hundred percent the use case that we are seeing at our customers hey thanks for um showing us that demo i think uh, our financial services customers can definitely uh leverage this uh, to their uh, benefit um you know what's important too is uh getting learned lessons learned from other customers can can you share how um some of the customers you've worked with have started that journey to you know uh, with ai the roadblocks they faced where they failed um you know anything that you can share with the audience i think will be super helpful one of the things that our customers often struggle with at first is where can artificial intelligence be applied so i appreciate you calling this a journey it really starts there um, being able to understand the business value, the opportunity is one of the most difficult things. They see in the news, these self-driving cars, they see these concepts presented in Hollywood video, but the pragmatic real applications of AI to enterprise is often difficult for them to, to, to find out, to understand. So we start with the art of the possible. We use demonstrations like the one we just saw to help make it clear how artificial intelligence can be applied to real world scenarios. We then establish where those opportunities are. We can stack rank them to find which ones provide the most opportunity and value to the business, but might be you know, complex or simple to implement. Then we find a use case that we can then prove. We use a proof of concept, a quick implementation to, to generate understanding and experience around how artificial intelligence can be applied. And then from there, we actually start rolling this out to production use cases, getting this into the business real world, seeing the value and the return start coming in. Um, one last thing I'll add to the journey is often the misconception that AI has to be 100% automated or it's not useful. In reality, as Steve demonstrated, you can have human in the loop concepts where a person can validate or interact with the artificial intelligence, making it much easier to get value on day one while you're training artificial intelligence to become fully automated on its own without any human dependencies. But while that might sound like a detractor to many business leaders at first, it's actually a huge benefit to return on investment because it allows you to get ROI on day one as you start using this technology, rather than waiting six months down the road before some massive feature is complete and you can start using that. So starting with that, that analysis up front, understanding the pragmatism of where AI can be applied, proving it out and experiencing it, and then understanding that there are stages of value you can get right away, oftentimes helps an enterprise through that entire journey from beginning to end. Ken, you know, I, I love how you mentioned, right, the time to value. I think there's, for our financial services customers that want to get started, they don't need a, a full data science team that comes in and looks and creates these models. Your solution here is really showing how business users can come in and start to really train a model without any sort of data science experience. So I'm sure our customers are excited to get started with this. Can you share some call to actions or maybe next step resources that our customers can leverage to uh, start accelerating this journey. Absolutely. Uh, prepared two different links that the customers can visit. Uh, one is a pre recorded demonstration of how this can be applied in the insurances side of FSI. Um, that's a webinar you're welcome to go view and see a more in depth example of what we demonstrated today and how that can be applied to the industry. We also have the opportunity to demonstrate this to your personal executives or against your own documents and see how this works real time. Um, you can also visit that link to schedule your own demo with our AI experts and see that for your use cases. Daniel, Ken, and Steve, thank you for sharing your time and perspective. I'm positive our viewers have learned a wealth of valuable information today.
What we learned today is AI is really taken off, and this is a great time to start leveraging AI capabilities to ingest, store, and extract data for document intelligent processing. Then we saw a powerful demo on how you can train the solution to continuously improve where IT doesn't need to be involved in building those models. We then walked through what it takes as part of that AI journey for our customer, including implementing the solution, lessons learned, and really how those non-technical factors aren't important and customers can get started with this right away. So if you're interested in starting the journey or if you're in the middle of it and would like some guidance, please reach out to your account teams that we can schedule an envisioning session or follow up. Really great stuff here. Thank you, Dan, Ken, and Steve. So Johansson, let's move on to Q&A. What are some of the viewers asking? Thanks, Edwin. So we've got a question in here around customers getting started when they have requirements to store data in an on-premises environment. And this sounds like it's a hybrid story, but what solutions and what options do we have to help our customers in these scenarios? I'll take that one, Johansson. Uh, really interesting development, and, and that's a request our customers have been making, and Microsoft's product engineering uh, delivered. So now we have the ability not only to architect and deploy this solution in Azure, running platform as a service, but our customers have the ability to also deploy the solution in a containerized fashion in their on-premise data uh, center uh, or in a hybrid cloud. So they can actually leave the data on-premise, process the data on-premise, deploy Microsoft's AI models on-premise, and they never have to move it into the public cloud. So it really opens up, um, it comes down to requirements, right? And Nudesic and Microsoft are gonna help uh, provide the best solution recommendation, but if the requirement is to have that data and have the solution uh, sitting in a customer's data center, it's absolutely an option now. That's great, thanks for sharing. Uh, we have another question here from Anonymous. Uh, how can we justify the business value? What type of ROI would our organization get? That is a, a very pointed question for implementing these solutions. And one of the most obvious points of ROI is decreased operational costs. It takes manpower to get this data out of these documents, images, et cetera. So you can expect real t value around decreasing your operational cost of doing so. However, there are some less obvious value propositions, things like higher employee productivity. We're actually gonna take the bot out of the person because they don't wanna be doing these mundane work all day long. And we can actually help them elevate to more productive capabilities where their value really shines. And then there's also things like increased accuracy in data processing, advanced industry compliance, um, improved customer experiences, increased IT capacity. These are all potential return on investment that you could expect from these types of solutions. Looks like we're out of time. Uh, thanks again for attending via YouTube or watching live and asking questions. If you haven't already, be sure to register for FSI notification and invites by visiting aka.ms forward slash FSI Fridays. We're also open to very constructive feedback, so please send us your comments and suggestions at aka.ms slash FSI Fridays feedback. Be sure to catch our previous sessions of FSI Fridays on our YouTube channel, aka.ms forward slash FSI Fridays recap, where you can also post any follow-up questions that weren't covered today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So Johansson, we have such an awesome lineup for February. Why don't you give the audience a preview of what's happening? Definitely. We're looking forward to our Finance February. On February 5th, we're going to be joined by Microsoft's finance leaders who will talk about our story to reduce finance's cost and enhance effectiveness. On February 12, those same leaders from Microsoft's Office of the CFO will explore the art of the possible using productivity tools to create the lowest TCO environment by collaboration, integrating for simplicity, and having intelligent security. Finally, on February 19th, our Solution Showcase series continues featuring shift technology solutions focused on the insurance industry that leverages artificial intelligence and advanced data science to achieve operational excellence to reduce costs, improve loss ratios, and deliver a better bottom line. You won't want to miss it. Thank you and see you next time on FSI Fridays.